So, you're embarking on a brand new Borderlands 3 adventure. You've recently picked up the game, and now you're heading into the world in search of epic loot, ridiculously outlandish weapons, more gear than you can hope to carry, and the hopes of becoming the best Vault Hunter there ever was. Only problem is, right now, this is you. So how do you go from this, to this? And how do you go from playing like this, to doing something like this? Well, lucky for you, I'm here to help you on your journey. Take a seat, grab a notepad and get ready. My name's Arix, and this is your ultimate beginner's guide to Borderlands 3. Everything you need to know to kickstart your adventure. Borderlands 101. The first thing you need to understand is the leveling process in Borderlands. Leveling up isn't rocket science. You play the game, take out the bad guys that stand in your way, complete missions, and you earn XP along the way. But one thing that is important to understand is the way in which you benefit most from your encounters. While it may often be tempting, even at the start of your adventure, to seek out the toughest challenges and the most powerful enemies in the hopes of jump-starting your leveling process and boosting through the stratosphere. In Borderlands, leveling works a little bit differently. Ultimately, you gain the most benefit when you are, generally speaking, the same level as the content that you're tackling. Every quest or side quest you pick up will have a level, and while end games some of this content will scale with you, at the beginning of your journey, you'd do well to target the activities that are appropriate for your current level. And with that being said, that places a much greater importance on side quests. While it is totally possible to just ignore the side quests, focus on the main story and power your way to the end, there will come times where this ultimately makes things more challenging, and at times, if you're too low level and your gear isn't quite up to scratch, then you're just making things unnecessarily difficult for yourself. So as you explore the locations Borderlands 3 has to offer, be sure to keep your eye on the map. Side quests show up as yellow exclamation marks. You can often pick these up and complete them alongside your main mission, so two birds, one stone. Plus, some of the side quests even lead to super awesome weapons. So essentially, what I'm trying to say is, do your side quests, you'll thank me later. Now in a game like Borderlands, a game where there are over 1 billion weapons, it's safe to say you're going to encounter a lot of loot. From enemies, from quests, from chests, from pretty much everything. The game will throw loot at you thick and fast, and before you know it, your inventory will be full, and you'll have more loot than you know what to do with. But in order to ensure that you are appropriately matched for the content that lies ahead, you want to be frequently swapping out your weapons, grenade mods, shields, and more as you get them. When you take a look at an item, you can compare it with what you currently have equipped. The item score in the top left corner is a quick and easy way to determine overall gear improvement. And while it's not always as simple as picking the weapon with the highest score, since sometimes a lower score weapon might synergize better with your build, it does serve as a quick look means to assess what's worth your time. Outside of that, compare the stats, look at the bonuses, and ensure that you're equipping new items as you level. It's very easy to get caught up in the flow of the game until suddenly you're shooting an enemy, not dealing a great deal of damage, only to remember that you haven't changed guns for the past five levels. As you progress further throughout the game, you'll make more meaningful choices based on what items, gear, and weapons synergize well with your particular playstyle, but early on, just throw on whatever is most powerful, and you can't go wrong. So by now, you've set out on your adventure into the vast world, you're taking my advice and you're juggling both main quests and side quests so that you're leveling up as efficiently as possible, and you're equipping all that sweet new loot you keep picking up. Cool. Good job. Now what about your build? See, as you level up, you also earn skill points, and you can spend those in your respective trees. Each Vault Hunter has three different skill trees, with three associated action skills, and a plethora of options to choose from. So with all this choice, where do you begin? Well, first things first, rest assured, no choice is permanent. You can always respec back at the quick change station, so don't be afraid to try different things out. But assuming you've done all your side quests and you're on your way to fight your first main boss, then you're likely sitting at around level 8. That gives you a grand total of 6 skill points to play with. In truth, at this stage, you can hardly call that a build. You're only just scratching the surface, but that is still enough to make a noticeable difference in combat. No matter which Vault Hunter you choose, you'll likely have some variation of skills that lean more into survivability, and skills that lean into damage. And honestly, the best advice I can give you is lean into damage. While it may seem tempting to pile points into more health, ultimately, that's just going to slow down your experience. I like to think that a good offense is the best defense. The quicker you can kill the enemy standing in front of you, the safer you're ultimately going to be. If you chose Amara, the melee-focused Siren Brawler, then you can't go wrong with her Brawl Tree. 
being able to run up and face slam groups of enemies is a quick and easy way to clear out crowds, and it can often save you in a pinch. Pair that with points in personal space, which increases your gun damage the closer you are to your enemy, and then you have a nice combo where you're rewarded for being up in someone's face. You can then snag a bit of health recovery with clarity, and spend your last point in Samsara for further gun damage increase following action skill use. If Flak, the Beastmaster, was your choice, then early game, I personally really like the Hunter Tree. The Rack Attack action skill essentially gives you two free high damage projectiles in the form of Rack, that you can then send homing in on your enemies. This, alongside your grenade, gives you a lot of damage from afar. Pair that with your Spider Ant Pet, and you'll get some natural health regeneration at the same time. You can then pile your first 5 points into Interplanetary Stalker, giving you damage stacks on kills, with another point in Leave No Trace for that ammo refill on crit. Ignore the cryo mode for your racks early on, the innate fire damage is good enough, and with this, most trash mobs will die very quickly to your racks, and the cooldown on them is so fast that you'll frequently have them ready to go. For those of you that went with Moe's, the Gunner, and Mech Pilot, then the Demolition Woman Tree is my personal favourite. Early game, Moe's mech really can do some incredible work, but she's also a formidable fighter on her own. Putting points into Fire in the Skag Den will dish out additional incendiary damage whenever you deal splash damage, be that from your guns or your grenades, and pair that with a point in Means of Destruction, and you'll have a chance to add ammo to your mag following those explosions. Also, be sure to throw those grenade launchers on your mech for a really good time. Basically, just go and blow stuff up. Trust me, you'll be fine. And finally, for the secret agents out there, those of you that chose Zane, he's special, since he is the only Vault Hunter who can have two action skills equipped at the cost of his grenade. So early game, grab both the drone and your Digiclone. They'll be your most reliable combination. Pair that with 5 points in Synchronicity, which increases your gun damage when your action skills are active, of which you have two, and you then have a recipe for some good early game damage. Throw on the binary system passive, and you'll get a cryo nova anytime you swap place with your digiclone, and you can then spend your final point in fractal frags, giving your current grenade mod to your digiclone. So then despite sacrificing your grenade for a second action skill, you still have plenty of explosions to go around. Now at this point, you've likely taken on your first handful of quests, got some levels under your belt, and you're grabbing your guns to go and pay a visit to the COV at the Holy Broadcast Center. There awaits your first real boss encounter, Mouthpiece. Now, Mouthpiece, as bosses go, isn't really going to be the greatest threat you face, but he is your first real introduction to boss mechanics. So in order to ensure that you have the best chance of survival, and are then able to go to explore the galaxy in search of even greater challenges, here's what you need to know. The Mouthpiece fight takes place in this rather cool disco-like arena. Located around the perimeter are some of those speakers that you will have encountered as you progressed throughout the level, the ones that will attempt to blast you with sound. And you then have Mouthpiece himself, wielding his Killing Word gun and his Disco Shield. Upon closer inspection, you'll notice that Mouthpiece's health bar is divided into three different chunks. In gameplay, this means he has invulnerability phases. Once he hits the first notch, there will be a brief period of time where you cannot damage him, and you instead have to clear up some of the adds that will fill the room, whilst also avoiding the sound explosions in the process. So to begin with, use whatever you have at your disposal to delete his first chunk of health, whilst also of course avoiding as much damage as possible. During the invulnerability phase, you want to clear the room, but do try and leave a few adds kicking around. If you're playing solo and you happen to go down, having the odd weak enemy to kill and get that second wind is going to prove incredibly helpful. Once the immunity phase wears off, you can then work on the second chunk of Mouthpiece's health, before again running around for the second immunity phase. As this fight goes on, things can get a little hectic depending on how many of the other enemies you let run free, but thankfully, there are a few conveniently placed speakers that can provide some much needed cover, should things get a little overwhelming. Once the final immunity phase is over, however, pile everything you have into him, not forgetting your grenades, action skills, and if applicable, pets, allies, mechs, all that stuff like that. And then upon killing him, not only is the quest complete, but you'll also have a chance to snag his fancy music gun too. Good job! Beyond this point, you really have all the building blocks you need to continue on your adventure. You'll visit new planets and destinations, fight new enemies and bosses, take on new quests and side quests, don't forget the side quests, as you begin leveling up and shaping your character. Don't be afraid to try out different builds as you level, you can always respec if you don't like it or it doesn't work for you, but variety is the spice of life. Additionally, if you want some more tips on how to build your characters, you can always check out some of the videos over on the Arix Gaming channel where we have in-depth guides for each and every Vault Hunter. But for now, that is your Borderlands 101, your ultimate beginner's guide. Everything you need to know to get you on your way.